flight takes off at 5 and I have to drive to Chicago which is three hours from home so it's gonna be a great week without any sleep at all but it'll be worth it Okay, thank you. So that is the line store line, and it's wrapped around two blocks. So I wanted to go in, but I will not be going in <laughs> because I'm not that patient. So we're here instead. Ta-da! And this has been really long in coming, and I'm sorry, Brian, for not doing this soon enough. But, um, yeah, this is uh, gonna be me talking about permission to dance in LA. So, it was kind of insane. Um, I got really lucky. One of my subscribers, um, who happens to be wonderful, um, offered me a ticket, and so last minute I got to go out to LA, which I've never been to before, um, so that was super exciting. Um, and I had an adventure, um, and <laughs> everything just kind of worked out, so it was one of the coolest things I've ever done. I normally don't just, you know, fly to random 
states across the, the literal country um, for a concert, but it <laughs> was incredible. Um, yeah, so I went to day four and I think that it was probably the best day that I could have gone because there was Jin's um, birthday project which was amazing and the energy was so high and the boys were so happy and like so Brian and I were way up in the top um, and honestly like it was the coolest thing because we could see like the army bomb ocean and it was beautiful. Like there were moments where I was just sitting there like, oh, like this is the coolest, most amazing thing that I could ever see. Like I, I just, so uh, some backstory for those of you that don't know me, I became an army in 2013. Um, I found BTS on accident uh, while I was listening to a Pandora station. Um, uh, it was like my K-pop Pandora station because I had listened to K-pop before that. And um, I was warming up for ballet class. We have rehearsal all day and I was doing abs and um, one of their songs came on and I was like, oh, I like this. And it was kind of one of those like, like everybody finds. And, like, Oh, I want to see what other music they have and this time they were like really heavily hip-hop so I mostly listened to them when I was warming up because um, it was good like hype up music let's do ballet kind of thing I know it doesn't make sense but that's I like to warm up and get hype for ballet class I guess um, as you can see I just finished a performance of Nutcracker so I have a lot of extra going on right now but yeah so I I found them and then um, I just remember like their first fan meet and uh, obviously I wasn't there I just remember watching it watching bits and pieces from people that posted them online and uh, how excited they were to see the like what was it like a hundred people that showed up 200 people and it was crazy to me to see this stadium in a foreign country packed with people who their message reached at a time when they needed it or just random people who just liked the vibe or people that wanted to go to this a crazy amazing concert because everyone knows that a BTS concert is like insane like from the, the effects and, and the energy of the crowd and the fan chants and who US people we need to work on our fan chants we we are not together we are not cohesive um gosh where do I even start with the concert though um why were they naked? Why were they all naked? What is happening? Have we have we exited the Victorian era? Like, what's going on? I felt attacked. I don't know how to handle this. Like, I there was just like shock and awe, and then and then there was the moment after the the Black Swan fake love mashup thing where they all had to exit the stage to 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 you know quick change and you I. I know that you've all seen videos of this at this point because they're all over the internet and on Twitter, but you and I both know that the only reason they started taking their clothes off before they left the stage is because they knew that we would freak out about it. I know, you know, we know. Taehyung's got an Instagram now. That is also very dangerous. We know, I know, you know what you're doing. I'm not stupid. Um, JK just whoo, naked. I did not ask to be attacked this day. Just wanted to vibe. Just wanted the music. Enjoy the atmosphere. N naked. Anyway, <laughs> and I don't know how I got so blessed, but but Yungi was a redhead, which is what I am. <laughs> And and then and then Namjoon was also a redhead. I had two BTS members that matched me in the ginger club. 
and I just felt represented, I felt seen, it was beautiful. Um, I loved seeing the intro for Black Swan Live. It was so beautifully done. The backup dancers were so on top of their shit. Am I allowed to say that? I don't know. But they were so on top of it. <laughs> Killed it. Absolutely beautiful. The VCRs. I So the last concert I went to was their Love Yourself tour. And besides these, like, those VCRs were pretty, like, tame and very like bubblegummy, especially J Hopes and JK's. And um, these were not bubblegummy, especially the very first one. And then Taeyang just like took the. Yeah. Also, SoFi in general was not organized. Like, it was kind of a nightmare. My poor friend that I was staying with, Renee, she. She waited in line for like eight hours just to get into the theater that she already had an assigned seat for. Like, I understand waiting in line like when you, it's general admission and you're on the floor and you're trying to get to the barricade. Like, yes, if I was gonna be at barricade at a BTS concert, I would absolutely camp outside to have that opportunity. I don't know, maybe. I'm not very... I don't know, who knows, maybe, maybe. But I would I would love to, like that would be, that's the dream. Just looking up and be like, hey you, I see, I've seen you on the internet since you were a child. That sounds weird. Um, <laughs> I feel like I've grown up with them. Um, it's been so long. Anyway, um, yeah, I understand that. But having to wait in line for seven to eight hours to sit in a seat that you already bought, like that's insanity. Like the fact that they were so disorganized that they didn't have enough staff for 50,000 people. Like, I don't know if they just thought that like it was 50,000 fake people. Like, are we to that point where people just like write us off as bots to that extent where they've sold 50,000 tickets and they were like, eh, half of them probably won't show up. And then I got my um, my vaccine uh, card verified earlier in the day when I was there, but then Brian had to get his done when we showed up to the concert, which we only showed up an hour early, which was absolutely perfect because everybody was gone by that point into the stadium. And the, the boots for the vaccine verification, they were empty. They quit. The, the one little bit that you had organized and put together, they, nobody was there. Why? I don't. I don't understand. Yes. But, anyway, I digress. <sighs> Guys, there was just a lot that happened. Yungi, it was... I'm, I'm sorry, Tony. I was... A, I keep saying it. I felt attacked. There was a lot of... There was a lot of attacking. I've also found a very soft spot in my heart for Tay. Because... Like, and, and J-Hope, Hobie. At the end when they were doing their mentions and Hobie was near tears and the stuff that he said, like, I just really wanted to say, like, I hope, I highly doubt that any of them even know who I am, but I just really, really want to say to BTS, like, if you guys ever watch my videos, like, there's a reason that we're still here. And it has nothing to do with your insane dancing. I mean, it's cool, don't get me wrong. Like, it's definitely a plus. <laughs> but I would have gone to this concert even if you guys had sat on stage completely still in little wooden chairs. Like, it still would have meant just as much to me because, like, I got into you for your music because first First, at first it was hip hop and it was really cool and said a lot of the things that I couldn't say um, because I was a very introverted, shy uh, 20 year old. And then um, it started to 
morph into this positive message of self-love, which I really needed, uh, battling through a, an eating disorder and an unhealthy work environment and, you know, all of that kind of emotional abuse that comes with it. and and then quitting my job and getting injured and, and not being able to dance, which is the one thing that like I identified myself with. Like I wasn't a person, I was a dancer and then I couldn't dance and it was just, so like your music has walked me through some of the biggest and gut-wrenching parts of my life. And like, yes, don't get me wrong, you are very attractive. But it wouldn't matter if you weren't because like your words and the way that you live your life with them are what I am going to see. So like I said, it didn't matter that I was up in the nosebleed section 500 and something or other. Like the atmosphere and just he, being able to hear you talk and and sing live these things that you were born to do it was really special and really beautiful and i'm so incredibly grateful to brian thank you thank you for taking me with you um it was a magical experience and i've been talking for too long so Thank you BTS for being yourselves and if you never create anything else after this, like, it was enough. You have been enough. So, thank you. Um, if anybody has any questions, like, about the whole experience, please put them in uh, a comment down below. I'll go like this because everybody that does these kind of videos goes, down below. <laughs> and I will answer anything that comes to mind. Um, I hope that you all are thriving and healthy and please get vaccinated. Um, like obviously the Omicron is not responding well to vaccines, but at least the vaccinated are not getting as sick. So um, I, I value you and I hope that you are staying safe. Um, yeah, and hopefully someday we'll be able to return to normal and they can come back and that would be amazing. So, I'll see you guys in my next video. Hope you enjoyed the videos.